Further corroboration of a shot fired from in front of Kennedy's car came from the late Dr. Evalia Glangis in her only filmed interview. She was no stranger to guns. I've been handling a gun since I was a child. Couldn't even hold a gun. I had to put it on the fence in order to shoot it. Paul! On the morning of November the 22nd, 1963, I was a second year medical student at Southwestern Medical University in Dallas, Texas. We ran around the side of the building to the emergency room exit, and the presidential limousine was there. Had been staying there for some time, just watching the back of the emergency room, when I realized that there was a bullet hole in the windshield. I talked to my friend next to me and said, look, there's a bullet hole in the windshield, and pointed it out to them. At the time, I did not know any of the details of the, of the shooting. I was quite shocked when I looked up and saw the bullet hole, but it was very clear. It was a through and through bullet hole through the windshield of the car from the front to the back. I don't believe there's any, even any cracks associated with that bullet hole. It seemed like a high velocity bullet that had penetrated from front to back in that glass pane. At which point a security officer of some type raced forward and jumped in the limousine and drove it off even as I was leaning against it to an area uh, back of us somewhere. And that was the last time I saw the limousine. The Secret Service made certain no authority in Dallas had an opportunity to examine the bullet damage to Kennedy's car. Over the ensuing days, the car was scrutinized in the White House garage by a number of people. But one day was different. If one examines the White House garage logs, it is very interesting that in the late evening of November 24th, 1963, in the entire day of November 25th, 1963, not one person is listed as having come in to the White House garage to have any contact with the limousine. The late George Whitaker Sr., seen here with his wife, was a lifetime employee with Ford and held a managerial position at the Rouge plant. He went to work on the morning of November 25th to be confronted by an amazing sight. He was astonished when he went to the B building where the garage existed at that time and he saw the Kennedy limousine that John F. Kennedy had been murdered in. The interior of the limousine had completely been stripped and the windshield was not in the limousine. He went to the glass lab where he was in charge of laminating glass and the glass lab door was locked. He knocked on the door and it was open and two of his subordinates were in there with the windshield that had been removed from the vehicle. They were under orders to take that windshield and use it as a template in making a new windshield. But what fascinated him and which he discussed with his family and no one else until he spoke with me was that he saw a hole in the windshield. There was a good clean bullet hole right straight through on the front. Right. This had a clean round hole in the front and fragmentized the front of that. Mr. Whitaker had 30 years of experience working with glass and had seen many tests performed on glass, including tests performed with firearms. He described that hole as being in the same location that Charles Taylor Jr. of the Secret Service had described the hole in his report. And of course, without knowing that anybody had observed it before then, but he also was absolutely 100% convinced that that shot had to emanate from the front of the Kennedy limousine, thus indicating that a shot had been fired from the front to his mind to 100% certainty. After George Whitaker died in 2001, this statement was found amongst his possessions, reaffirming for future generations exactly what he had told Doug Weldon eight years previously. This document was discovered, and for me, it gave the final stamp of approval that what he told me on that August day in 1993 was in fact the truth of what really happened.